When I heard about you uh, from Professor Paul Buckley, yeah. I was thrilled to hear about it all. Oh, because, that's great. Uh, yeah, he, he um, was Paul a, taught me. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah your older supervisor. Mm. Uh, and then Paul was so proud of you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, could you briefly tell me about driverless car? Um, in more detail, I mean, uh, earlier I heard about your interview with uh, yeah. Dennis Novo, um, but uh, you know, it's a really, really fascinating topic it for is. young people. I, I think so, and I think, I think it's one of those topics that has caught society's interest for the very reason that it's broken already, um, and it's such a such a complex social issue as well. So the technology is fascinating, right? So how amazing to have a vehicle with its own cameras and, and lasers be able to take on something that we don't let teenagers do until they're 16 or 17 and, and have machines doing it. And how, how fascinating and amazing to be working in an area that could fix something that's so painful when people have accidents and, and broken things. And, and how amazing that that same technology comes up in so many other guises that, look at, or think of all the forklifts, think of um, all the trucks, all the ports, all the things where we'd like to amplify what we can do as a species. Think about exploration on different planets and moons and think about looking after the oceans. All of those things had machines moving by themselves because of software and algorithms that we can develop and and I've I've personally never lost that thrill of you can write a, a text file a computer program it's just a text file and a two-ton machine can decide what to do at a traffic light or uh, a vast ship can start to move because of a pattern of software and there's something deeply intellectually interesting there for me about how, how that can be how can it perceive the world how can it get better because Tuesdays come off the Mondays. So if you ran a machine every day of the week, what's going on there? How does it, so as it behaves in the world, it learns about the world. How do you capture that? How do you say something strong about whether that's going to be safe? How do you, how do you ensure that? And how do you get all the machines to share their experiences in, in moving through the world in the very way that humans don't? Um, and so driverless cars is, is one example of that, but we see cars all the day. And we're rubbish at driving and you know it, it it will be some time before the machines are as good as humans in in all the places but the single thing i keep coming back to is machines singularly don't have the fault that singularly humans do and that's we're rubbish at repetitive tasks we're appalling at concentrating and excellent at being distracted machines have none of those qualities yeah uh, I read an article about you, and the, you know, in recent study, uh, yeah. in recent KPMG study, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, by 2030, mm -hmm. uh, more injection from UK yeah. government, uh, like 51 billion pounds, and then that will create about uh, 300,000 more jobs. Uh, I can't understand how that could happen. I didn't quite recognise all, all of those, those numbers, but here's for sure that robotics and autonomous systems technology amplifies what we do as a species, just like computing does. And if you, if you look at now uh, the wealth and the health that's been created in the world because of silicon-based computing, I think robotics and autonomous systems are simply an extension of that trajectory. Um, and they're tools. They're just tools, like fancy hammers. And um, all of our civilization's history has been accelerated, smoothed, made better by the advent of tools. And that's what we're doing here. That's what engineers do. These are quite remarkable tools, but they are just a machine. Uh, and they're a machine that do things better than we do because of how we evolved. And they're an extension of us. Mm. When I entered your building, yeah. uh, Robotics uh, Institute, yeah. and... Uh, Every single room is occupied by human beings, but yeah. we couldn't see Robert. 
Oh, they were there. Oh, really? They were there. Oh, so yeah. Funny. I mean, they weren't they weren't humanoids. You know, they weren't they weren't robots with legs and arms walking around like C three PO. But if you look closely, well, there's just one buried down there. Yeah. yeah. There's one downstairs that's got a snake arm on it. Um, and then there's our garage at the front where we have a, a self-driving car. Uh, we've got a space vehicle um, down there. Um, so they're, they're around. And, and here's the thing. We are particularly good at the algorithms and the software that makes machines smart. We don't make the hardware so much. We have some hardware competency. So we don't really make the phenotype. We don't really spend so much time on the atoms. Now, we, we have to do quite a lot of that, but we're not into designing um, uh, new vehicles. What we like to do is take a vehicle that's iron, a bit dumb, and make it smart by adding the software on it. So what you would have seen is, yes, the robots are there, but there's an awful lot of computers and an awful lot of software being written. Mm. You know, the, uh, there may be some young students yeah. who may want to study robotics. I'm Do you banking have... on there being many. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have uh, any advice to young people who, who are willing to study robotics? Absolutely. Um, program, then do some more programming. Um, Connect your computer to something real. So connect your computer to some sensors, to some motors. You can, you can get hold of very cheap sort of development kits that do that. And get into the mess of the real world. So it's really messy when you start to try and point a camera at things and lights are flaring and the rain comes. Be, be bold about getting into the places where your algorithms just don't work because that's where you get told what the hard problems are and the bits that it doesn't work. And there's just no substitute for having a go and playing with some code. Get yourself a low power processor, a Raspberry Pi, an Odroid, whatever your flavor of the month is, get that and play, play. That's what I did. I mean, as a kid, you know, I was, I was building and wiring stuff together that never really worked, you know, but from six, you know, and. Be amazed at how you can write a text file and then something moves down your stairs um, and play with that. So after robotics, research, research on robotics, driverless cars, what's next? Well, um, so the Robotics Institute is new. Uh, we've only been up and going about six months in it, and it's a transformation of the original mobile robotics group. And so what we're going to do now is really broaden our reach so we have a new leg lab starting so we're going to have running robots uh, we're looking at drones uh, we're going to start looking at underwater vehicles as well with new research groups starting with inside the robotics institute with some fantastic uh, new colleagues that we've got joining us here so um, that's going to be the next chapter i think of, of oxford um, uh, also something that's very important to me um, is some entrepreneurship side of stuff so um, i've really got addicted to trying, um, well, we're doing well actually, of, of getting our technology out there into industrial partners and people who want to use what we've made. So, so that's good fun um, uh, and it's important. And the outreach as well. So um, I think that we need many, many more women in computing science and uh, yeah oh, that's encouraging yeah. to all women. Well, absolutely. So, so, you know, please, if you're out there, code it doesn't matter. Um, uh, and anything other than just time in, in front of that screen. So um, I'd like to do some more of that, and I'm interested in, in sort of um, helping policy decisions through and uh, just making sure we stay on that right track and single-minded of making bits to move atoms. Mm, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's great. I'm having a ball. Yeah, Voices from Oxford are launching the Tea Talks, and uh, we have Tea Talks events regularly, and the most audience, they are young people. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, including high school students. Sure. So next time we'd like to invite you to give great. a talk. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Real pleasure. Thanks for coming.